If you've ever wondered what an aircraft composite shop looks like, well, stick around. Here's one fine example in Kentucky that makes composite parts for several different companies. So rivet down that like button and engage all notifications by hitting that bell so you don't miss a single episode. All right, I'm here in Morgantown, Kentucky. Stop by the factory 10 shop, give you a factory tour, shop tour, of what's going on here in composites. Hi, I'm Gary Smirdick with Factory 10 Composites, and we are a composite vendor to several little aircraft companies. Uh, we do a lot more than aircraft, though. We've built very large wind turbines. We've done proprietary projects for race car applications, including carbon fiber internal engine components. Uh, we were the first people to build carbon fiber wheelie bars for drag racing cars. Um, we still have the quarter mile speed record for top fuel dragster wings. and. Um, Mostly today, we're concentrating on aircraft, experimental aircraft. So behind me is a longer term project that we're engaged with, uh, the Rapture Aircraft Company out of Australia. And again, the goal for this aircraft is to use Turbo Aero's new line of uh, lower horsepower turboprop engines. It's going to be a very fast, very fuel efficient aircraft. It's a four-seater. Um, and uh, this, this project was uh, waylaid by the COVID-19 uh, uh, disruption last year and it's probably as a result of that it's probably put us about two years behind schedule but um, we'll see after Oshkosh we'll be working on this over the winter we'll have some new engineering data uh, with which to uh, start making some progress with it but this is going to be a very nice very fast aircraft four seat and again it's it's an older design that's that's being re-engineered and modified to maintain its speed and efficiency uh, characteristics uh, but with modern process, modern materials to make it lighter and stronger. So we showed you a finished spar, maybe before or after this video, but uh, this is where the spar begins its life. First of all, it's kitted, and uh, I'll just pull this material back. So before the spar is infused, all the material has to be pre-cut. It takes us about three hours to cut the caps all together. This is, again, the uh, tension cap. It's a little thinner than the cap up here, which is the compression cap. The process this bar is about to undergo before infusion is called debulking. And we take the spar without any resin or any hardeners of any kind, and just with it dry, we pull it under vacuum. We pull full vacuum, anywhere between 26 and 28 inches of vacuum. And that helps make sure that all of the components of the spar are properly oriented and in proper position. After we put it under debulk for a while and we're sure we've accomplished that mission, we unbag it again and we add the, the core that goes in the web, which is more of that four millimeter girt, and two more plies of carbon fiber, one at a 0 90 bias, one at a 45 degree bias. And uh, at that point, we put the final bag on it along with all of the infusion technology that goes with it. Now this will have a peel ply all the way down the uh, inner area of the C channel and it will have a, an infusion tube where the resin is actually introduced into the material. And out here, just a few inches away, is a vacuum channel that runs all the way around the spar. The vacuum comes in the thinner areas, which is the web, the web and even the uh, overlap area, what we call the overlap area where the spars pass into the uh, carry-through structure of the aircraft. Uh, that's the only very heavy area of the web. Uh, we introduce the resin right at that point. Uh, with peel ply and what we call flow media, which allows the resin to move very quickly. We stop it before it reaches the caps because we want it to slow down to give the resin all the time it needs to make sure that every piece of that cap is totally saturated properly. And we've been having just excellent results. These bars uh, it, it exceed the former load limits on the aircraft, so they're a really nice piece. The main thing is the original spars in the Arian uh, our, one of our quality requirements were that they weighed 38 pounds a piece. These spars come in about 15. All right, so here we have a completed Arian uh, Lightning upper wing skin. So what you have here, we'll just pull this out of the mold for just a moment. Lift it out of the mold, and there's the bare mold. There's the skin with a beautiful gel coat, which is the base, basis for your paint job. 
and it protects the tool surface from the aggressive acids in the resin. That's the main reason filling pinholes and protecting the tool surface is the main reason for your gel coat. Most of that should get sanded away before paint gets applied. Uh, but here's the finished skin. And this again is a combination of e-glass, a structural foam core, and more e-glass. And then with the advent of the new carbon fiber spars that the Aryans have, we've added uh, two plies of carbon directly down a spar line to help spread the load of the caps a little further across the, the uh, wing skin surface, both upper and lower. And we can show you that, and we have one of the new spars here right behind me. And we'll set it right into the line. So this is the upper wing skin. So that's your compression uh, cap down here, which has a few more plies than the tension cap because carbon is strongest in tension. So we put a few more plies in compression. Now this bar was designed by Structures.Arrow and Jim Jeans and his team uh, up in Virginia. And their, their usual customers are people like Lockheed and NASA uh, and uh, very brilliant, very seasoned um, uh, aerospace uh, design team, structural design team. And they're the guys that designed and spec the new spars for the Aryan Lightning. Hey, thanks for joining me on this episode. Let me show you who's made all these videos possible. Awesome companies like Dynon Avionics at DynonAvionics.com. AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com. AirWorks at AirWorksAviation.com. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. All right, everyone, before we jump back in, if you like these videos that we are producing weekly, rivet down that like button and engage all notifications by hitting that bell so you don't miss a single episode. Remember to check out the description below this video for links and special affiliate offers available to you. All right, I wanted to jump in real quick and just uh, share this with you. Gary built this very unique sanding table, sanding booth to collect the dust from, you know, doing composite work. And I just figured I'd have him give us a quick tour of what he, he built, this custom built sanding booth. All right, well, this is a, a downdraft grind booth. You know, the problem with composites, there is one, one big problem with composites, and that's dust. Now, fortunately, with the Aryan Lightning aircraft that we manufacture, most of that hard grinding and dust work is done by us before you get your airplane. But uh, for us, we have to trim everything as it comes out of the tool. So dust was a big problem for us here. We still plan on building a dedicated room for a dust collection room that we can roll the whole airplane into. But for now, we're dealing with what we have. So uh, when I moved in this building, it had a scrap piece of aluminum shroud off of something. And rather than throw it out, I thought about building our own downdraft table. Normally, I don't like downdraft tables. They don't seem to work as effectively as some other solutions. But um, I got an idea to use some regular box fans, little $19 fans from Walmart, built them into the side frames, one four inch, uh, four foot rather, uh, LED light, and a couple pieces of plastic grating from Granger. And uh, I still have yet to put a centralized switch on it, but um, it collects dust amazingly well. We clean it out every couple of weeks. I still haven't got my functioning doors on it. I still have to reach in from the top, but eventually I'll have hinged doors for easy access to clean out the larger pieces that fall on the bottom. But this is something relatively inexpensive that most hobby guys, if you're building more than one composite aircraft or if you're doing kit cars, anything like that, real easy to build. All right, so here we have the Arian main landing gear, uh, rear half, uh, wheel fairing, I should say, wheel pant. And uh, it's the finished part is split into a nose half and a rear half. This is the rear half. It's ready to be demolded and we can demold it right now on camera for you. And all we need to do is break that front side loose just a little bit with a plastic wedge. We'll tap this little wedge in here just a little bit, enough to get one of my plastic wedges in. And there's the mold in half. There's your wheel pan. And there's the wheel pan. Just needs to be trimmed. It has a nose piece that's attached as it's installed to the aircraft. That's all custom fitted. 
Uh, but this is the part we provide. It's one coat of mat, uh, one and a half ounce mat and one coat of 7500 and seam tape down the center. It's very strong and it's uh, durable enough to handle your rocks and dirt clumps and things that will invariably happen to your aircraft if you land off pavement. Right here we have the Arian LSA model, the classic uh, nose pant, which just come out of the mold as you can plainly see. Hasn't been trimmed yet. This is a non-flight critical component, so it's not infused, it's not vacuum bagged, it's just, uh, actually this is an ISO resin, it's a step up from vinyl or polyester, a little more dimensionally stable. So this is Factory 10's layup room. Uh, it is climate controlled, it has uh, a couple of Mitsubishi uh, heat pump air conditioners, a couple of gas heaters for the extreme winter weather, ceiling fans to keep hot air and cold air where it's supposed to be. Um, right now, this is about a 60 foot long building by or room 60 by 15, uh, and we're about to um, open up another 48 feet to it, 12 inches wide, uh, where at that time we'll be able to get an entire fuselage and both sets of wing skins all in this room at one time. So it's going to give us a lot more working area, a lot more clean working area, although we do not call this a clean room. It is not a positive pressure room. It is a very clean environment for doing layups. This is kind of a multitask area right here now. Originally it's set up for, you may notice the uh, two winches off the large I-beam up there. That's how we rotate the fuselage for the Arian air aircraft uh, main structure. We have to tip the fuselages up and down depending on what part of the assembly process we're doing. So those cranes are there. They also help us when we get a roll of very heavy fabric in, whether it's carbon fiber or fiberglass, we use those to help lift it. Uh, rather than use our backs. So behind me we have a single seat uh, experimental aircraft that we're working in conjunction with an Australian company, Rapture Aircraft, uh, to develop and bring to market. That's a composite aircraft. Uh, it's going to utilize uh, a new turbine engine uh, being uh, designed by Turb Aero and uh, it'll have a standard option will be 120 horsepower turboprop uh, up to a 200 horsepower turboprop this aircraft will also be uh, suitable for many conventional uh, horizontally opposed engines like the Jabru 330. We plan on having a completed aircraft, uh, not flight worthy, but a completed airframe uh, at Oshkosh in 2021. So uh, Factory 10 Composites, we do have a presence on Facebook and uh, my phone number is uh, 270-999-9264. We have a website under development. It's still not active. When it does come active, which hopefully should be just within a couple of weeks, uh, you will find us at ftcomposites.com. That's ftcomposites.com. No hyphens, no dots, no nothing. FT Composites. And uh, again, we're Factory 10 Composites. My name is Gary Smurdick. I run this company with my brother Bill and my wife Gail. Remember to rivet that like button and engage all those notifications. Thanks for watching this week's episode. Be sure to check out experimentalaircraftchannel.com. Find us on Facebook and Instagram at Experimental Aircraft Channel. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.